I hunched my shoulders, and my wings sprouted with the usual prickly burning through my back. The racerback tank I'd chosen exactly for that reason gave them free rein to unfurl. The silver-white feathers glinted at the edges of my vision. A week or two ago, the weight of those appendages on my wiry frame had felt oppressive. Now, with a single flap and the rush of air over them, they sent a giddy tremor through me. They gave me more freedom, not less. Even if they also represented what I was now and therefore all the things I'd lost to become a Valkyrie. My life to begin with. A future in the world of fellow human beings. Petey. No, I wasn't thinking about that now. I hadn't completely lost Petey. Not unless I let Moonin and her prison win. Loki loped up toward the sky, heading toward the high walls he'd said his wager had helped build. Freya, as Falcon, swooped after him. I sprang into the air, and my wings swept me on upward. The cool wind buffeted my face when I turned it toward the sun. Maybe it could be this simple. Just fly out into whatever realm Moonin had constructed her cage of memories in. Shatter the illusion by breaking through its outer limits. I soared higher, as if I could dive into the fathomless blue overhead like an ocean. The wind washed over me with the smells of metal and stone and the apple orchard to the south and a faint aftertaste of ash that lingered on my tongue. Ash? Before I could wonder much about that, Loki gave a shout. The trickster had stopped against what looked like the open expanse of the sky. But as I drew up beside him with a few more flaps of my wings, I felt it too. An invisible pressure holding us down. I strained my wings, but I couldn't propel myself any higher. Scowling at the air above us, I swung a punch at it. The impact sent a spear of pain radiating down my arm as if I'd hit my funny bone hard. Okay, not doing that again. Freya's falcon was circling beside us, unable to go any higher either. Not that I have much hope, Loki said, and beckoned me to follow him gliding farther across the city. Here and there we tried to fly higher, only to be pressed back down. My skin started to crawl at the sensation of that vague, unseen ceiling. We really were trapped in here, as utterly as we could be.